Uh, Chairman Doyle, Ranking Member Lada, Ranking Member Walden, esteemed members of the committee. Uh, my name is Angela Seifer. I'm the Executive Director of the Digital, National Digital Inclusion Alliance. I'm here representing NDIA and our affiliates, and Computer Reach in Pittsburgh also thanks you for us being here. Uh, Twenty-some years ago, I was in, uh, I was a grad student in Toledo, Ohio, and we were, I was setting up computer labs, I was teaching people how to use Word, I was um, organizing meetings, and we thought of our work as bridging the digital divide. Our focus was on computers and computer training. In 1996, we were not concerned with internet access. If we had just two computers in a lab that were connected to the internet, we thought we were cutting edge. Today, folks on the ground who are bridging the digital divide are facilitating access to home internet service, devices, and digital literacy training. They are nonprofit organizations, libraries, governments, housing authorities, and more. They are the heroes. NDIA represents over 400 of these affiliated organizations in 41 states, the District of Columbia, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. NDIA's positions are based on our affiliates' on-the-ground experience and research. I would like to address a few myths today. Myth number one, there's a misstatement that's often repeated that the digital divide would be bridged if we just fill the rural broadband infrastructure gaps in the US. According to the census latest American Community Survey, about 14 million urban households in major metro areas as well as smaller cities and towns and 4 million rural households still lacked broadband subscriptions of any kind, including mobile data plans. What did 60% of the unconnected urban households have in common with more than half of the unconnected rural households, they all had household incomes below 35,000. Households with income incomes less than 35,000 make up 28% of US households, but they account for 60% of those without any broadband internet service. We do need to address the lack of broadband infrastructure in rural areas but it's just one barrier to individuals and communities being able to fully participate in society today. The other common barriers, no matter where one lives, are the cost of internet service and devices plus digital literacy skills. Simpli simplistically equating the digital divide with just one of these barriers increases the division in our country. Myth number two, no worries, the excitement around 5G says that we'll just, that'll solve the digital divide. 5G will not solve the digital divide. Current broadband technologies were not deployed to all neighborhoods unless local governments mandated such. There's no reason to think 5G will be any different. Additionally, 5G as a broadband service requires 5G capable devices. Low income households struggling to pay for internet service will certainly not rush out to purchase a 5G enabled device. Myth number three, well intentioned individuals have stated that if we can convince non adopters of the value of the internet, they would certainly subscribe. Anyone who has resisted using the internet quickly realizes that the internet cannot be avoided. When you apply for a job, register for classes, or even to find out what your social security benefits are, the greatest barrier to broadband adoption is not relevance. It is cost in digital literacy. Residential internet service in the US is expensive. On the low end, internet service generally runs 65 to $70 per month. That's a lot of money. Unfortunately, I can't provide more detail as to the cost of internet service because the data doesn't exist. We need the FCC to begin collecting data on the cost of home internet service and make it publicly available. In the US, digital literacy training is undervalued and underfunded. One third of manufacturing workers lack proficient digital skills. Half of all construction, transportation, and storage workers lack proficient digital skills. There is no funding ded dedicated to digital literacy training in the US. It has been left up to local governments, libraries, and nonprofits to piece together resources to address the basic digital skills training that million <coughs> millions of Americans need to cross that digital divide. Piecing together funding is the wrong strategy for a strong workforce. Now let me share some good news. Digital inclusion solutions in the US have been crafted from the ground up. NDIA's affiliates are providing guidance to low-income parents, connecting to their children's teachers, teaching seniors how to use their electronic health records, helping veterans learn digital skills to acquire a job, and help enabling disabled adults to participate more fully in their communities. We know that trust is an important factor. Technology can be quite intimidating. The most successful digital inclusion programs are rooted in the communities being served. 
what is missing? Digital equity planning at the state level and financial support for that planning plus the implementation. A good first start would be to pass the Digital Equity Act. We are also in need of increased awareness of the problem and the solutions. So thank you. This hearing is increasing awareness. You are increasing awareness.